Well, hello, everybody. That was a live dissolve uh, you just saw there here on, <laughs> here on Logic Live. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, make sure you set your chat window to panelists and attendees so everybody can see uh, the chat as it comes in. And if you do have any questions, please be sure to throw them in the, um, in the Q&A section. My name is Andy, and welcome to Logic Live. I'm so excited to have you here with us today. Uh, I'm, uh, let's start off with, you know, the usual, with a little slideshow. If you wouldn't mind, this episode of Logic Live is brought to you by, or brought to you all uh, by Synesis.io, Solutions Development Integration and Support. These guys have been my personal reseller for the last 15 years. Uh, could not do what I do without them, uh, and I just want to thank them for not only supporting us, you know, at Lively, but also supporting uh, the Logic community and the Flame community. Uh, they, they sponsor user groups all over North America, and uh, we couldn't do what we do without them. So thanks so much, guys at Synesis. Um, if you have any questions at all about their remote workflow solutions, please check them out at Synesis.io. Synesis, supporting Flame artists since 1997. Well, let me give you all an update. We had a hell of a week. Um, first of all, over at the forum, forum.logic.tv, uh, the forum is doing really, really well, and I want to thank everybody for uh, for all for embracing it, for contributing, uh, and for really helping to make it grow. Um, just to give you some stats, we have over 700 users now over at the forum, over 65,000 page views each month, and the time to respond to new topics is uh, less than an hour. And uh, another another statistic that's kind of so fresh, I, I didn't really have a chance to put it in the uh, the slideshow yet, is um, traffic over on the Logic Facebook group is down. 40% since uh, the forum went live, actually really since in the last month. And so I just want to thank everybody for uh, trying to help make the forum over at logic.tv um, the go-to place for flame artists. We had one frame of white last week. We announced our big winner. We had a fantastic, I, I think last week's show was one of my favorites uh, in the six plus months that we've been doing Logic Live. It like, I said to somebody, I think before one of the, uh, contestants before we started that, you know, having uh, everybody from all over the world live here on Zoom, like on the show with us really kind of uh, captured the true essence of what, you know, One Frame of White was was always meant to be. Um, in years past, you know, we would always show the winners at like a New York user group meeting. And then I would have um, people who, uh, who entered send little videos, like thank you videos and things like that. But to actually have um, everybody on or so many people on so that they can talk about their entries and answer questions just kind of really, it, it, it showed off in its purest sense that global community that Logic has become. So I just want to thank everybody. Um, and, you know, a huge congratulations to our friend Tim Hendricks uh, from Pasadena, California for his winning entry called Catch. Uh, Tim was our first place winner and he took home um, a Dell Precision 7750 mobile workstation which is a rather kick-ass laptop. And uh, I believe Tim said that it arrived uh, Thursday or Friday. And so uh, I can't wait to see all the fun stuff he makes with that. Tim, uh, I've discovered in addition to being a flame artist, teaches art at, um, uh, at, at an art school in Pasadena. And so it, it, it's, it just, it just it, there are all the feels there, you know, in terms of helping Tim out. Um, but please, if you haven't already, go over to oneframeofwhite.com, check out all the entries from this year. And in fact, check out all the entries from the last six years, uh, or six or seven years rather. Um, it's really inspiring to see what flame artists are doing. So speaking of being inspired by flame artists, uh, I'd like to welcome my guest today. My guest today is Amanda Elliott, and she's a flame artist based in LA. Uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting Amanda and working with Amanda. And uh, when she reached out to me about being on the show, I, I thought this was kind of like the perfect, perfect guest. Um, Amanda, are you there? There we go. Oh, I just have to unmute you. Yada dee, da da da. There, there you go. go. Hi. Yes. <laughs> We're living through Zoom updates in real time. Now everybody's <laughs> automatically muted. But welcome aboard. How you doing? Hey, good, good. Doing good. Well, um, like I said, uh, it's really a great pleasure to have you here. And I thought that the topic. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just. Stop everything. Renee Tim has just Renee. <laughs> hey, what's up, Renee? <laughs> okay, Renee has been acknowledged. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I thought what you wanted to discuss was uh, was kind of perfect for you know the the, the conversation we have here. 
uh, at, at Logic Live. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with you. And I even remember when, like the first time we met um, at the, the Lively office out in, mm -hmm. uh, in LA, you know, you really presented yourself as like an artist who lives in both worlds, you know, like, you know, offline and you know what us old timers call online, you know, what yeah. finish, you, you know, both worlds. And that's kind of, um, you know, made you an invaluable resource uh, because so much of what we struggle with as flame artists, especially like finishing artists, is trying to, um, you know, create that like the smoothest transition of, of metadata and like, you know, brain trust, you know, from the offline edit from the editor through to finishing. And uh, yep. when you were telling me some of your experiences, I was just like, oh my God, this is, this is, you know, you almost have like the perfect job because you do live in both worlds. But why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your career and, uh, and we'll go from there. Sure, sure. Um, I do want to give a little bit of credit to Randy McEnty because the podcast that he did a few ago when he was like building Max and stuff like that, one of the questions he asked was what artist do you see yourself as? And I just, that really just made my mind spin and just thinking about like my career and what I do. And it even made me just think about myself, what artists I want to do. And so thinking of all of that in my career, that's when I contacted you. So, you know, thank you for any, for asking all of us that question in your podcast, because it really got me thinking about that. Um, thank you, Randy. But yeah, thanks, Randy. <laughs> but my, so my timeline is, it's, I don't know, I think it's very different, but I've been very, very fortunate to have the career that I've had in this business. And so basically this goes all the way back to when I was like 18 years old, I was living in Michigan. Um, I went to a school called Specs Howard Media Arts and I originally wanted to go in for radio. <laughs> so I was even, wow. uh, yeah, so I even interned at a country radio station. I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, but it turns out that no, I didn't want to do that. And then I was like, oh, I want to work on a, I want to be like the first weather girl or, or something like that. And then one of the things that they have you do at the school is you have to be like the TD, the camera person behind the desk. And I was like, I'm gonna be a, a weather girl. And then they do the thing where they pull the prompter. So you kind of have to ad lib and I just froze. So failed at that. Um, so I'm like, the okay, maybe that's The story almost sounds like a country, it almost sounds like a country music song, you know, in my yeah, limited right. experience. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> and so, and then they had an editing class and nobody wanted to edit because everyone wanted to be on camera. So I ended up editing everybody's project. And so that was cool too. Um, and then after uh, that school was only nine months because it's like a concentrated school. And then after that, I was 19 years old and I ended up working at J. Walter Thompson, which is the JWT now and working on mostly like edit reels and concepts for the agency uh, that they call the chop house. And then, so this is the best part. So, <laughs> so it, it gets way better than this. So I'm 20 years old and I start submitting my resumes out and there was a place called Mad River Post in Detroit. Um, and so I was just so freaking excited. I sent my resume and I was like, oh, and I went in for the interview and I was just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on, but I really want this job. And they were like, cool, you're hired. So my very first day was a 19 hour day. And it was uh, during this Pontiac campaign with like the James Brown and like music. And it was just a crazy campaign. And I remember as we were doing this, um, I, I, I even have this picture of me sitting with like a million dollar worth of neg, uh, cause I was logging it in and, um, I, I remember working with this editor and he was just like, yes, we need to do everything in a uh, key code. Cause they didn't slug the neg. And I'm like, huh? Sounds great. And, he, and he's just like, I'm like, what does that mean? And he's just like, oh God. <laughs> so I'm just like, that was a, uh, I had to rethink my life decisions at that point. Um, and the funny thing was, is that I started right before Christmas and I was only 20. So they had to sneak me into our Christmas party that was at a restaurant slash bar. So that was fun too. Uh, wow. You know what? As you finish that, yes, this is a country music song. Just this kind of definitely... lived out in real life, <laughs> ending with yeah, underage yeah. drinking. But yes, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> and then even, well, it, it gets even better because the editor that I worked with, Cam, he was a very, very good editor. And this is actually the foundation of my career that I have now. And it's so important to point out was that working with that editor, he said something that really stuck with me. And I would start, for example, calling folders like for Amanda, for Cam. And he would just look at me like, what, what is this? What is this shit? What am I supposed to do with this? And I was like, it's for color. And he's like, then you put for color, then you put for audio. And then, so that started like the basis of like naming stuff. So where anyone can take over. And then one other thing that he said to me too, in that time was just that Amanda, if you get a hit by a bus tomorrow, I need to finish this commercial anyway. And I was like, whoa, okay. I don't label any folders for anybody's name ever again. <laughs> so that started the foundation of, of my career now. But so after that, I'm 22 years old. I work at a place called Universal Images in Detroit, and they were the biggest discrete house at the time. I think they had 
11 flames, 10 smokes, one inferno, three 3D studio max and like a combustion. Uh, yeah, I don't remember at that point, wow. but yeah. So they were very kind of like seg segregated in a point where it's like the online people stuck to online and graphics people stuck to graphics. And so um, that was a really good time when I was there. I worked on a ton of auto show stuff, various clients, car commercials. If you need like 200 Chevy commercials and you need them out to DG channel, I'm your girl. <laughs> that was, uh, that was fun oh time. Oh my God, too. DG Fast Channel. Right? Oh, oh, I just yeah. got like, sorry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that sorry. Was, that was Most fun. of a good chunk of my career just came flooding back. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. I think a lot I of people just got PTSD. Time. Sorry about that. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, so not only did I have a really good opportunity to work with a really good editor in offline, immediately after that, I was able to work with a really good uh, online editor as well. His name was Paul Garland, and he works at Switch in Detroit. And he was actually one of the editors that was just like, here, take the pen. You try it. You do a slate. You lay it off. Here, I'll show you how to conform. No problem whatsoever. So I was just really lucky to be able to work on both sides at such a young age with two different, two different artists and editors that were just you know, willing to do that. So uh, I give them both a, a lot of credit for helping me with my foundation today. Um, so then I fast forward to 24 years old, moved to Cali. <laughs> and then I think, uh, and then I started at Red Car, which I feel like everybody started at everybody Red Car, did. which is awesome. Yeah, which is really awesome. And um, they hired me specifically because I knew offline and online. So I remember they called me in Detroit because um, I actually, oh, the website la411.com, I believe. You can go to post-production and you can find all these companies. And I literally sent out probably 300 resumes. I was like, I'll be a receptionist. I'll do anything you want. I just want to move to Cali. I want to live by the beach because that's what everybody in the Midwest says, right? So um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to live by the beach. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, so I ended up working at Redcar and they were just like, you know, offline and online. I'm like, yeah, they're just like, okay, that's cool. Come work with us. So as I was working there for a little bit, uh, me and actually the online person at that place, we left and we went and started Elephant Post instead of Lost Planet. So that was really cool at that, at that point, like being like a year into LA and I was like, whoa, what's going on? So I got to work with a lot of amazing people over there as well. Um, and then let's see here. Oh, and then back in 2014, I actually did end up, go, end up going to Australia for a couple months looking for work. And I had an interview at Method, well, it was Method Sydney. Um, and then there was a class taught by Joel Osis out there because, uh, yeah, I didn't, sadly, I didn't get the job. And then he was teaching a class and I'm like, who is this guy? What's going on? So I know, Joel, you projection horror, node you. <laughs> 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 Everybody knows that. Um, but yeah, so he taught a really amazing class. And so that's when I met him. And so but but basically, other than that, I've just been freelancing the past 12, 14 years. Um, yeah, in the freelancing world in LA. So it's, it's been quite amazing. Why don't you take me through like a typical day? You know, uh, you, you describe yourself as a finishing artist. I know uh, other times, you know, the, the, you've also been described as a, as a flame assist, you know. Um, why don't you do that? Take me through a typical day uh, where you're bouncing back and forth from offline to online. Okay, yeah, we can start with like a, a flame assist, for example. Uh, should I maybe give an example of one of the jobs that I worked on before? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. So when I was working at a place called Significant Others, it's the uh, flame room inside of Final Cut. Uh, I was working on a huge job in 2018 with Justin Blaustein, who's another fantastic flame artist. Um, what started off, I think, is like six spots for Kaiser uh, ended up turning into like 150 or something like that, uh, which is just like a ton of versioning. But so the original project was like six bots, you just come in, you're gonna help him, you're gonna do the conforms, whatever else. And then um, it'll just be six spots. So what kind of turned into that job is like, as he was working on other, uh, just random stuff that gets thrown in, he's working on beauty, he was working on different versions, all of a sudden he needed different versions to show clients. I could overhear the clients talking about like, oh, we need to make another version uh, for Washington DC that has a different disclaimer. And in my head, I know if something has a different disclaimer, it needs another ISKI. So I'm kind of taking notes and writing this stuff down as well. Um, so I guess it's just as an offline assist, I'm in this particular job, I'm the one that started the Google Doc. Um, we didn't have shotgun or anything. So it was like just a big Google Doc of what disclaimers matched what ISKIs uh, for anything that changed in the middle, whether it was a certain art card or something at the end, like whatever these versions were, it was, it was for Kaiser. So it was just all these different versions. Um, the account person ended up using my spreadsheet that I made. So her and I, like, I just gave her a seat, pull up right next to me. 
and uh, let's let's figure out all these versions on our own. So I'm just constantly listening to like what's going on in the room and also how I can you know help the other artists or the senior artists or the lead artists on the project with what they need to do uh, as well. Yeah, I think you know it, it's funny. Uh, you you and I have had a couple conversations prior to the show here, and we talked a few times about you know this label of being <clears throat> excuse me a flame assistant, you know, and sometimes uh, you know there's a there's 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 a, a negative association with that. You know, it's it's like you're you're the junior, you're the person who you know does the tasks that the senior artist doesn't want to do, or it, it's that's just such a misnomer. You know, like in, in all the conversations uh, I've had with you about this, you you said the magic words there, like you're the eyes and ears in the room. You yep. know, the 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 assistant exactly. is a t is the the flame. Sometimes, as the flame artist, uh, you're when, especially when like the shit hits the fan, you're just you have blinders on your brain. I mean, you just you are so focused on that impossible task and that deadline that you cannot possibly make that you can't be aware of anything else that's going on, you know? And having someone in the room uh, to listen to, I mean, to not only like take accurate notes of what the either the client is telling you or the account person is telling you, but also to be able to play chess, you know, to eavesdrop, to overhear like the agency creative and account person and producer all like dealing with their own personal cri or professional crises. And then gleaning from that what that might mean for you and the rest of your team, and then you know putting your phone in silent mode and texting it over to you know yep, pretend like exactly. you're looking at them, and while you're not <laughs> looking at the screen, like texting to the you know the producer at the at, at the post house you're working at, it's invaluable, and it it's the kind of thing that um, you know a flame assistant is really an artist, a producer, a scheduler, a, a, a you know a technical like just problem solver and client services sometimes. And client services sometimes. It's uh, I, I just remember my my the phase in my career where I was I was doing that kind of stuff. It was it was eye opening for me. I remember walking into uh, Flame Suite and seeing like that chair, and and trying to figure out like what do I need to know to get into that chair. And it's really it has nothing to do with the keyboard, the pen, the buttons. Yep. It's all about that room, you know. Um, you had, you had mentioned a, a couple of other spots, or we had prepared a couple of other spots that you know were kind of good examples. Which oh one would, yeah, would you yeah, like yeah. To let's start um, with? let's actually start with the Kia one. That one they actually played during the NBA playoffs. Um, so this was this was a really huge job, and uh, this was pretty fun to work on. Actually, this one. All right, cool. I'm going to impress everyone now with a dissolve. Ready? Oh man, Whew. my mother. If she was watching this right now, she'd be so proud. Brad's made us feel something once. They can do it again. Introducing the Turbocharge K5. Yes. All right. So, so take us yes. through that Kia spot. <laughs> That one was a lot of fun to work on. This one I actually did uh, the offline assisting for. The editor uh, was Rick at White House and he was in London. So, you know, that was fun. Text at five in the morning and trying to figure out stuff, but hey, got to do what you got to do. Um, <laughs> yes, it was very, very, very cool commercial to work on. So um, I guess just going through now that I have both experience in offline and online, being able, and since I've freelanced with White House for about like 10 years now on and off, Working on that one, um, editorial assistant, you have to know all the dailies. You have to go through all the dailies. You have to go through script notes, make sure your script notes match the dailies. You gotta make sure nothing's missing. Then you gotta go through and pull sound effects. And sometimes you have to do, I started off doing a little bit of sound design on another spot and then finished up some a little bit on this spot as well. 
Um, and then sometimes you just you do ghost editing in the background, just regular editing. You have ideas. You have to go through, um, pull the takes, whatever takes are in the script notes. You do breakout sequences for the editor. Um, anytime you hear, and since this was all remote, uh, everything was going on in Zoom sessions. So as I heard the client say stuff like, oh, where's that one take of the one car that spins around the carousel, but it turns like really sharp. I'm like, oh, that's one on one take five. I, I green taked it for you. So it's like, I have to know all the footage and I have to be able to uh, respond immediately to what the clients need. It's like, oh, did we have any sound effects for like the tire screeching, but not too loud? I'm like, actually I grabbed real K5 sound effects from blah, 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 or whatever, if we didn't get one supplied for us. So going through all of that and then um the other fun part was so towards the end there's this whole like clown mouth that the car drives through at the end before the art card and so this is this is a fun part where having a lot of online experience really comes in handy um because as we know as flame artists when light hits something especially sheet metal like you can see it it reflects on everything um so as the car was going through, the clients wanted to play with the idea of like, what if certain things were shutting off at different times? And the thing is, because the mouth is this huge, uh, bright thing that when that turns on and off, it reflects everything else. Um, yeah, so that that's one of the shots. And then also towards the end too, before the art card, there was another, another shot too. So we know that um, the light just reflects off of everything on there. So basically when they were like, oh, we're going to prep uh, for, you know, one of the VFX companies to do like a test. And, and so basically I told the, the producer and the editor, I was like, actually, I have a flame license. I have a Mac mini. I can do a mini comp. And they're just like, what? So that's when I'm able to, <laughs> so that's when I'm able to give a little comps for them. But then also when it comes to color prep too, when they're like, okay, we just want to uh, hurry up and do a test. And, you know, we're just going to send this off to color. And I said, well, since I know light reflects off a of sheet metal, I want to be able to grab another take of the car, the carousel and the very back background that turns on and off. I need to make sure I have on and off of every single little object. I also need to make sure I have on and off of the floor. I want to make sure I have a plate of the floor. I want to make sure I have the carousel in the back alone clean. Um, so it's just all these kind of little things that play into like building a scene like that with lights reflecting and turning off at different times. I can just kind of, you know, reach in my online pocket and go like, oh, I remember those things from comping that I need to supply these to color. It's just invaluable. I mean, I know I've been on the, the, the receiving end of this a million times where you know you get your you get your color you get your conform prep and the agency walks in or zooms in now and says you know oh yes well what we'd like to do is change the timing of you know the when the how the lights turn on and and you just kind of like the the your soul just evaporate whatever last bit of humanity you had left like you know <laughs> being a flame artist just yeah just goes up like a cinder because you know they never ask the questions yeah, you know, and that's part of the and, reason why I'm like, they need this element with the lights on and off because they want to yep. be able to control that environment and the floor too. Everything reflects off the floor. So yeah, so I then think, like little pieces, you know, production tape and ramps when the car comes in, there's a huge ramp. And I was like, hey guys, just, you know, there's a ramp, that kind of stuff. And then yep, also the, the wheel locking like, up. Yep, being able to flag things that, that need to be, that are going to need to be cleaned up or may need clean up and making sure, yeah. like you said before, if, if yep. you know that in one of the other takes, there's this perfect moment where I could grab, I mean, we do that as flame artists all the time, you know, when you're asked to clean something up, you look at the shot and you, I like to say, you see it for like the sum of its parts, you know? So knowing all the dailies, knowing that there is a take that was marked no good for yep. performance, but actually has a clean shot of the door or the windshield or whatever, or where that and I'm looking for be. all those pieces. Yeah. And as I'm actively going through the dailies and then I'm starting to look at the storyboards and build it in my brain, I'm kind of like, okay. And then like even the wheel locking up at the end, there's other commercials I've worked on years ago where the wheel locking up is bad. It's something like the ABS or, you know, is going crazy or whatever, but there's also going to be a disclaimer too. So I'm like, is the disclaimer going to be here? Is it locked up? Do I have to find a cleaner shot of that hubcap? So I need to give it to VFX. Do we need to actually make it spin? So it's like all these little things that I'm constantly asking questions to my producer about like do we need to darken the windshield like do we you know see the talent not see the talent you know when the lights turn on like that just these little things that happen to come up in the past are really invaluable to bring them up then and there it's great i mean there are so many times i've 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 wanted to take like all of the assistant editors who work at our company and put them through uh, like a, a finishing boot camp you know uh where, where we could expose them or put them in these scenarios, you know, a half a dozen or so different scenarios where you can see that if certain questions were asked before the color session or before the prepping was done, you know, I don't know, just to, 
I really feel it, it so passionately about how you know, people who work across different departments or different disciplines in the creative process, if they knew just a little bit about each other's jobs, or maybe a little bit more than they than they do, it it would make everything a million times better. Well, yeah, and, and kind makes of, you like a brilliant assistant. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I can also sympathize with both parts too. So sometimes being uh, in online, it'll be like, oh God, why is this EDL a mess? And, but then I've also been the offline assistant where it's like the producer came in and said, you just, can you just quickly get an email, an EDL out right now? And I'm just like, but, and they're just like, no, right now, can you just export it right now? I'm just like, oh, okay, go. Um, so it's like, I've been in both <laughs> seats. And then I've also been in the offline seat where we get like a graphic back or we get something back. And it's like, why is the time code minus whatever zero? Like, what is the time code all messed up? Like, why is there EDL all? off like why are they giving us crap when their their shit's all fucked up or something like that it's like but you know i also understand sitting in the on so it's like i have sympathy and compassion for like both sides where mm -hmm. it's like i can almost look at the way the edl is structured and be like they were in a hurry they didn't understand that was probably a newbie or something like you know nothing nothing like bad but just like i can understand what was going on in the process and, and just and try to help at the same time and the best part is when i actually conform my own stuff that i prep that's fun yeah, you certainly can't blame the <laughs> assistant editor on that for, for yeah, getting like, bad well, prep, right? Yeah, it's my fault. It's my fault, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. There's a couple, uh, a few places that I actually freelance at regularly. Um, Stitch Editorial has Bacon VFX with Mitch Gardner. Final Cut has significant others. I've also worked at Nomad because Nomad has their online there as well. Um, Union Editorial used to have Resolution a while ago. So it's like I've I've been... Uh, able to just constantly be busy because it's just like, oh, we're missing an assist. Hey, Amanda, can you come help out? <laughs> or something, it's like, oh, I don't have time to conform this. Can you just go in online and do it real quick? And I'm just like, oh, I prepped it. Yeah, sure, why not? I know what I need. That's great. Yeah. That's great, that's great. Um, we got another spot here that, that we want to take a look at, right, for Harris? <laughs> this one was so much fun to work on. Yeah. I did the, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> And, and here's a fun fact about the the first shot with that guy though. Um, the clients were saying like when they were doing when they were doing casting, um, they loved his hair. He was great. It was perfect. And then they were like, oh wait a minute, did anyone tell him he's going to be in a crop top? And then it just turns out he has abs. So it worked out great for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a nickel for the amount of times that happened to me. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at this hair spot. And so it begins your epic adventure. <laughs> <laughs> where champagne bubbly meets rose petal rain floating your way to a life of leisure to the victor go the spoils as the neon it's most of my dreams lady by the way, the way. set up it's just an endless like dolly move funner and a liberace place. cape it's a state of mind find your funner ear yep so yeah, that was, a, <laughs> that was a lot of fun watching that <laughs> and picking the right take of the guy. I think there was one cut too where the guy was in the background and he kind of just did like this moonwalk off like camera <laughs> at one point. So it was, it was actually really a lot of fun going through the daily. So this was one that I offline on as well. And the best part of this <laughs> was, uh, so it was done in Premiere uh, with the editor at Stitch. And in Premiere, like the way that they had shot it, I think it was all like, I don't know, 90K or something, you know, it was really crazy. <laughs> so it, it was just really a processor intensive, but also when in Premiere, when they were trying to um, just like mask and do stuff, it was just really grainy and it was really taxing on the computer. And it was just, it just wasn't really giving them the results that they wanted, especially with the client sitting in the room. So this was another instance where I was like, hey guys, it's like, uh, I'm gonna talk to my, I talked to the producer and I was like, I can just go and flame and do some really, really rough comps. And then also on a side note, uh, me saying this, I don't say this to the clients. I usually only talk to the editor and the producer beforehand and they're the ones that know. And the people that uh, I usually get hired at, they're the ones that know, that I know also know Flame. Cause I don't wanna undermine, I don't wanna put the online people, I don't want them to think that I can just do it all. That's not why I'm there. So I, I just tell them my setups aren't going anywhere. I'm just gonna do a rough comp real quick though. And then sometimes they just tell the client I did it in After Effects, whatever, I don't care. That's totally fine. Um, but the cool thing was, is that I did a lot of rough comps for this one too, and there were a lot cleaner and it just looked really impressive the clients were really super happy um it was really easy for the editor to just be like hey amanda i you know i'm trying to do something different with this shot you know i would export my shot and then i would go jump over to flame and then i would comp it and then i would export it and i would jump over to the offline and so it's like i was really versatile to be able to work on this project for it to go smoothly and, and for, you know for the clients to be happy and be able to kind of see something that looked close to pretty much what it, it looks like there that's awesome, and, yeah. I, and uh, I, it's it's you're 100 percent right about being sensitive to you know all parties involved, 
you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think especially, you know, one of the things that's maybe under underappreciated is um, when there when there is such an overlap in uh, the creative process, you know, sometimes there's a tendency to forget that certain parts have a have like a monetary value attached to them, you know, like you, you don't want to uh, undermine like the, the post house's ability to charge for something just because, you know, if, if you did it as part of the, if you did the flame stuff as part of the offline, mm -hmm. then that might be a comp, that might be flame time they can't charge for, you know? Uh, so it's really, it, it, I think it's just an important thing that you pointed out. There. It, it's del it's a very delicate kind of ter territory. And, and then I just really bring up like, you know, if they want to tell the clients that that's great um, because it's all under one roof too. It was getting finished under one roof. But if, it, if it's going someplace else, it's just like, this is literally just for rough. Like I'm, I'm not booked in online. I'm not taking this away from online. It's I want to be able to show you guys something that's a little bit more true, but this is not by any means finished. Sometimes I'll do kind of a shitty job just so they kind of understand that it was rough too, because I don't want to take anything away from the online people. You know, if I can help make anybody's life easier, like that's kind of part of my job. Um, but I do really stress, you know, the producers, to to the editors like i'm not i'm my i'm not sending my bash to online this is not how it works unless and then i'm getting booked in online you know then it's a different right. story <laughs> then we can talk uh, <laughs> but right. it's just really really Listen. important that, that that's kind of that, that gets said and and actually it's everything's gone over really well i've never really gotten any bad feedback from anything you know they always say uh, a lot of, I think I've only had a couple people where they're like oh she did an after effects and that, that's totally fine if that's you know because there is politics we all we all know there's politics that that happen in this kind of stuff and that's totally fine but uh just to kind of keep it in the sense where it's like I, I just want to help you guys make this look good for your client so let me ask you what advice would you give to a, a younger artist who's just starting out who knows that you know the, the the stepping stone in either editorial or finishing is, you know, that assistant level, how would, but it can be over learning. One of those can be overwhelming, you know, um, what would you, what would you say to someone who's starting out? Uh, there's, it's so much more than sitting in that chair. And I'm going to kind of reiterate going back to what you were saying earlier, um, is that everyone just wants to sit in that chair. And the thing is, is that my whole entire career since I was 19, 20 years old is I've always been sitting in front of clients. I've never been in the back room with headphones, no, nothing wrong with that, but that's just, that's not me. I've always sat in front of clients. I always dress nice when I go to work. I always make sure I'm making a statement, but I think when it comes to assistants starting out, is it going to be the same thing that brings assistants up to when they almost sit in the chair and that's reading the room, that having eyes and ears on everything at all times. And so I can even give you an example. I'll bring it. I'll bring it back to how I've been brought up, though. Too is working in offline at Mad River, so young and being so like malleable. Like like my editor being able to impress these things. He was the one that really enforced. Like you need to keep an eye on these clients, and you you need to make sure that you know uh, they have their coffee when they need it. Do they want dinner? You get their dinner. Oh, and then I need to make sure you break down my dailies. Oh, I need to make sure that I'm okay too. So they really he really <laughs> stressed that <laughs> into me really early on. And then I also realized how successful it had made my career. So not only was it from a standpoint and just kind of me personally, not only was it a standpoint emotionally being there for the clients and for the artists there as well. Um, I think it was just being able to read it from an emotional standpoint, but also business standpoint. And what I mean by that, for example, is going back to that Kaiser job uh, back in 2018, where we had all those different, like hundred and whatever versions, is that everyone was just so stressed and there was all these different versions and, and their clients were young and their clients, we need this version, we need to do this. And all I'm doing is just listening. So they're just like, we have another version with another disclaimer. I just put that in my Google doc and put work in progress. And then they're telling me, oh, the disclaimer is just a city change. And I was like, okay, well, I already have like the Photoshop document maybe I'll just change it work in progress oh yeah we might have another ISKI so I just add it to the Google Doc so everything's already built so but I'm not telling anybody this I'll maybe text my producer hey by the way just you know I heard there's another ISKI coming along which means if it's a different change for a city they say the city in the spot so that means they're going to need another audio change so we're going to need more audio time and um and it's like oh is it an art card change is it just a disclaimer change no it's just disclaimer it's like I'm just constantly like getting the feedback from them and then telling my producer and then also and then to cut inter interject with like an emotional standpoint too if i walk happen to walk in the kitchen get some coffee and i notice my art artist hasn't eaten i need to find a way to make sure that my artist is also 
drinking water and eating. This is also really important too. And maybe my clients are getting stressed out. They need coffee. They need snacks. Let's get veggies in here stat, you know, or something like that and calling uh, client services, but you know, or I'll just go to my producer and be like, get the artist out of the room for 10 minutes and let him eat, you know, and then she'll call and then he'll, and then they'll step out, you know, kind of thing. So I'm, I'm constantly just checking and making sure not that everybody is like business point, but just like a personal standpoint too. If I notice clients are getting stressed, I'll turn around and start talking about like a dumb, like story that I had from like 20 years ago, like, blah, remember, blah, I don't know, puppies and ice cream, whatever. Um, I just, I, <laughs> <laughs> I just bring up something to change the tone of the room. But in the background, I already have these two versions done on my desktop that they were just talking and stressing about. So yeah. And then, and then I'll say something else like, oh, maybe we need to do a VFX shot for blah, blah, blah. But I already know that my artist is busy working on this. And he told the producer earlier that he needs three more hours and I'm going to be done in a half an hour. So I'm just going to start building this. Or is it okay? Cause they can see my machine. If I, cause they can see my screen. Is this something I can work on? So I'm constantly chatting with the producer. Like I overheard that we might need a comp for this. Do I need to send something and prep something for, you know, VFX at another company like, oh, but there might be a VO change. Okay. I can switch over and I can do that real quick. So it's like just the constant back and forth um of listening and i can just see that the the other lead artist is just yeah with the blinders like you were saying mm -hmm. so just having the eyes and ears on the room constantly paying attention to what's going on um and it's not all about you like you have to really make sure the the, the lead artist is taken care of you know he, i notice when they're not drinking water so i'll just go grab water and i'll just i'll give it to them i notice the clients man they went through all their snacks maybe it's time to get some dinner <laughs> or something Let's like get that a cheese plate in here stat yeah. yeah yeah exactly so um and then also <laughs> uh, yeah right <laughs> um or you know or a bowl of m ms and skittles make it fun you know i don't know mix the two see what happens oh man uh, right maybe don't, don't cross maybe the streams do <laughs> But, no, uh, like you're you're 100 right. Like I, I it, every part of our job, you know, in post whatever is stressful, you know. And we're all these, we're at the bottom of the hill, you know. Like all that bullshit is just rolling down, like a snow is snowballing down towards you. There's no reason why you have to amplify it, you know. I I, I try to live by this mantra that you know, when the clients come into the room with me, I, I mean, I'm not the greatest flame artist in the world. There, it's I mean, I, it, I but. I read the room with them, you know, when they come in, it's everything's taken care of. There is no stress, you know, I'm there to solve all their problems, you know, we're on the same team, basically. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's and the way build, I like, see it, especially that like magical year when all the flame bays, like, see, I, I said flame bay. So that way, you know, it's like an East Coast, West Coast thing that when all the flame bays like switched around so that we faced the client, you know, uh, everything changed. You know, so I, I mean, at least in, in the way that our, like my room is set up, I have a table, they can see my feet. <laughs> so, you know, I have to wear nice, you know, nice footwear <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I have to wear the good pants. I mean, and then, you know, um, and they can see me no matter what happens, they can see me. I have to mm -hmm. always like be cognizant of that, you know, that I'm yeah. on stage, that, that, you know, that I'm going to set the tone of this room. But you're and also setting the tone of the out, company too. Like you're, you're setting yes, an example you're the, for the company the as the well. Company. And uh, like, there's no problem with this like magical pen that we can't solve, you know? So let's just do it one step at a time. What are the issues, you know? Let's yeah. solve them. And once, once you solve one problem that the agency or your client is having, like the, the tension just, you can see it. It just melts off of them, you know? Mm -hmm. and then you can start to like have a creative process again. And maybe, you know, just blow their minds. And sometimes all that really means is making the legal more readable or, you know, making the title just a little bit bigger or something like that. And that's that. what they're going to remember too, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just this yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, I, we rolled I just... in there stressed and we left happy. And that's, that's, yeah. that's just as important as making like the coolest, like the coolest shit, the coolest images, you know? Yeah. And, and on that note though, too, I think another thing for assistance, um, and you call me assistant. I, I call myself mostly a finishing. I don't care what, a, what is the name of a rose. It smells so sweet. Is that how it goes? Um, but it's like, I, I really, it doesn't really matter what you're going to call me. I just mostly use like, I guess, finishing artists a lot, but I do take on the assistant roles because I just don't have the ego for that. So another, I think a, another thing to kind of point out to assistants too is you have to let your ego go is that you will sit in that hot seat eventually, but you have to understand that you're really in the hot seat. Like your hot seat is actually way more intense, like the floor is lava on fire kind of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> where, where you're sitting is way more intense because 
yeah, sure, the, the lead artist is next to you and they might be getting all the, the prestige and all the stuff for being the lead artist, but think everything else that's going on with you. So even, uh, even going back to, to the job I was talking about, the Kaiser job, it's just like as you know, the lead was focusing just on one spot and working in all these other things, I was building 50 in one day, and making sure everything was good, checking slates, checking disclaimers, uh, making sure I got all the specs, export specs for uh, social media and all that kind of stuff. So it's like if you, if you really, really think about what, what is the hot seat, you're in it. And then you have to let your ego go thinking that you like, you're eventually going to be the lead and your name is going to be in the credits and you're going to, and it's, I would rather have, or, or what means more to me is having the trust of my clients and the producers of the companies that I work at. I've been freelancing and doing this for like 14 years. That trust and the bond that I have with these clients and companies mean more to me than having my name in, in a credit in a movie. I, it means so much more to me. That's how I've been able to have my freelancing like business thrive for so long as I'm looking out for you, I'm looking out for the producer, I'm looking out for the clients, I'm intertwining, I'm making sure everyone's paying attention. If I'm sitting in a color bay and offline and I overhear something about a different version, I'm, I'm getting the producer, we only have an hour left in color and they wanna do another version, what do you wanna do? And then they call their producer and everything gets figured out. So it's like, I have to pay attention, but I'm here for everybody. So it's not just, I need to get my stuff exported for the clients. Like I need to get my stuff exported. Did you eat? Are you good? Are you emotional? Okay. I don't know if I can help you, but we got this going on over here. So it's like, oh. <laughs> so there's, it's more than that. And I think just because the assistant role gets kind of maybe downplayed, we have to understand that we're still trying to figure out where's the ceiling and, and where's the floor with all of that. I've worked with senior artists that don't even know how to conform, but they can do the most crazy coolest comps I've ever seen. So where's the ceiling, where's the floor for a senior artist? And the same thing goes for an assist. It's, it's this really broad spectrum, but understand that you don't have to sit in the front main lead to feel like you're anything important. You are super important to what's going on and having your shit together and as buttoned up as you can, it just, it makes me, you, it makes everybody look good, but especially it, it makes you look good to move to make that next step. If, if that's in fact your intended destination is the chair two feet away, then cool. <laughs> Perfectly said. That was great. Does anybody have any questions for Amanda? Renee um, has pointed out that it's blasphemy to put Skittles and M&Ms together. It is. It's a wake-up call for you sure. Know. I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a big, bright, beautiful world, Renee. <clears throat> oh, and then another thing I was going to point out too, the best part uh, is sometimes, <laughs> yes, Renee, uh, uh, I absolutely love it when I have to like hurry up and prep stuff and then come to find out that I'm just conforming it 10 minutes later. That's, that's always kind of like a fun thing. <laughs> it's like, oh, we need to hurry up and get prepped on. It needs to be done because we're gonna do it today. It's like, oh, we're actually keeping it in the house. Can you go just conform that real quick? <laughs> I'm just like, yes, of course, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, you press send and then your phone is the one that buzzes. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. Okay, so, nice. um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the role of what it's, it's so many things. There's so many things involved with what the assistant does, what the assist can offer, being able to pay attention to all of these things, and then having great communication with your, um, with your lead artist and with your producer. And I think that's, I can't even express how awesome it is to have this relationship with all these people that I freelance with. The, the clients and the post houses is because I, I love being able to have that trust of just like, whatever we can do, we'll, we'll figure it out together and I'm going to help you through it. I think, I just think it's wonderful. Um, you had shared with me some, uh, a story that, oh wait, we got a question here from Daniel. Uh, it says, how long have you been a freelance assist and are you planning on transitioning to a full-time artist? I have gotten a lot of full-time offers. Um, it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's sometimes it's hard. I don't know if other freelancers can contest on this one, but uh, uh, I think maybe it's a money thing at first uh, where you're just like, oh man, freelance to, to staff kind of thing. But I've been freelancing. I've been in LA 14 years, almost 15 years, um, but I've been in the business 19 years. <laughs> wow. Um, I've been in the business a really long time, but transitioning to a full-time artist, I, I mean, it's definitely, I'd have to look into it. Everything is, is super unique. I did have a staff position on um, uh, interview on March 12th. That was fun. Uh, that did not happen. <laughs> 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 to be, ex I know the exact date. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, if the opportunity came up, there's a lot of things that I would have to kind of consider and, and go into it um, and ask, but if, if, 
possible. Yeah, that'd be cool in the future. Yep, always keep your options open, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I always feel there's it's really good to have a, a work-life balance as well. I do so many extracurricular that? activities <laughs> and hobbies. What me? What do I do? Uh, what's that? What's a work-life balance? Oh, it's a work. Yeah, that that whole thing. Yeah, still trying to figure that out, though. But I think it's really, really important for people to do do have the work life balance and be able to do that and express it. And if there's something you need to do, I mean, people need to go pick up their kids all the time. Um, I need to go to my karate class sometimes. So it's like, eh, I got to figure out, you know, the the balance and everything, though. I found it really uh, challenging, you know, to to to. The lockdown, like working from home, you know, the the i mean in terms of like the whole work life balance you know it used to be like for me i had like an hour and a half commute round trip you know like one way like door to door and so you know when i left the like home i left home you know when i left mm -hmm. the office i left the office and you know if, if, if i was within one train stop you know you i could go back to work but um there's there's i've i've, I've found it kind of fascinating that you know in 45 seconds i can roll into work you know and that's if I take the stairs, you know, uh, and just and just trying to find a time, making sure that I I have a, you know, yes, I could wake up at six in the morning and roll right in here and start working, but maybe I shouldn't do that. And then the same thing, I need to kind of put the brakes on at a certain time in the evening. I don't know. It's 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 interesting that you um, just that you bring that up and 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 you know, as I sit here in this you know my blue flame room. It's kind of changed a little bit, which is quite nice, by the way. I was going to say there, what do you got going on here? That the thing, uh, the static ball thingy, what is that called? Yeah. yeah. It's like a plasma ball. You know? That's cool. Was, if anybody went to a Spencer Gifts in like the like late 80s, or early 90s, <laughs> that was definitely overpriced. Um, you got, you got a, a lot of nice stuff back there. I just have my my blue notebook that oh, Quinn Richardson yes. gave me. Yes. This, oh, is, yes. this is all I have. Thank you, Quinn. <laughs> Quinn, I think you gave me mine too. It was like at the at a New York user group meeting, you brought like a box of them. And uh, I gave them almost all away. I, you know, I definitely held on to one for myself. Oh man. At least you kept so one, so that's you, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It's back at the office. I have to get it. I think the last thing that I had in there, I, I made sure that like I would only write in there all of my flame like tips and tricks for myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh I'm gonna have to go back and re retrieve that one. See what I've what I've left. Um, I want. Ready has you. one too. Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you, Quinn. See the love. See the love and joy you've spread around the community. Um, I did want to ask you while we still have time, uh, in, in in that whole vein of like you know, uh, inspiring the the next generation of artists. You uh, you told me about how uh, you and Renee uh, had gone to. Um, which would I was it UCLA? Oh, it was um, it was uh, uh Cal, Cal, Cal State Long Beach. That's it. Yes, yes. Oh, this is I good. This is, just <laughs> awesome. this is this is really good. Okay, so uh, where do I start? Uh, so they have um, like a career day, and the people that work in in the film business, uh, they uh, so they have this whole thing where they have all of the people that work in the film business uh, lined up at computers and in this huge room and the, the kids would come in one by kids, students, people. Yeah. They come in one by one and they Young chat ones. with us and they kind of treat it like it's a, um, like it's an interview situation. And so everyone kind of is, is very, I don't know, everyone, I do it different. <laughs> I do it very different. I give these kids such a hard time and it's amazing. So the very, the first thing is that like, if I notice someone comes in, I'm just like, ah, you should really wear nicer shoes. And they're just like, oh, like, cause they're expecting me to be like, hey, this is a fake interview, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Hi, come sit down. Let me look at your portfolio. This is great, you know, kind of thing. And I'm just like, uh-uh, okay, cool. So they sit down there, put their laptop and I'm like, sorry, the internet doesn't work. And they're just like, but, but I'm like, the internet doesn't work. And then they're kind of just like, oh, Oh, and I was like, okay, so it, it actually does work, but I'm just saying, if you're not prepared, if the, you're trying to show them on your laptop and it doesn't work, what do you do? And they're like, oh. and so I was like, do you have a sketchbook? They're like, no, I'm like, get a sketchbook. So the next person will come in. <laughs> and then like this and one clean girl that in laptop, particular- clean by the way, before you- put Yes, clean up. the keyboard. If you're going to open your laptop up, like, oh, <laughs> clean up your desktop, clean the keys. Anyway, um, so this other girl, she really wanted to be a PA. Like this was like her hope and dream. She wanted to be a, a PA and that's fine. You do, you do your girl, right? So she's sitting down she's really excited. And, and I was like, what do you want to do? She's like, I want to be a PA. And I was like, I don't think you should do that. She's like, but you know, she's really uncomfortable. She's like, but that's what I want to do. Like, I really want to be a PA. And I was like, 
all right, no, not feeling it. And she's like, but I mean, that's why I'm here. And, and I was just like, good, you passed the test. I was telling you not to do something. You stick to your guns. Good. Okay, go on next. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and then there was also other people that, uh, so this was the course of over like two years. And so, oh, and then, so the third year that I was finally, that I was there just last year, people were actually lining up outside to talk with me because I was kind of like the bitchy one. <laughs> <laughs> So another girl comes in and she's good. She knows she's got like her sketchbook and she's just like, so I just want to show you this. And I'm just looking at her while she's like flipping the pages in front of me. And I'm just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, do you have anything else? You know? And she's just like, oh, well, I mean, I guess I have this and this. And I was just like, ah. and she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, ah, it's not really that good. You know what I mean? And she's just like, oh, and she like started to cry. And I was just like, I was like, okay, all right. Time out, time out, time out. Um, I'm telling you this because this is how the business works sometimes. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to give her the impression everyone's like that, but I'm just, I'm being really tough on you for a reason. You've got to stick to your guns and you've got to be confident about what you're doing. So if you're going to show me something in here, I want you to stick by it. And I want you to really like back it up. And, and, and if I don't think it's good, then just go, okay, move on. That's okay. Some other place is going to love you for you. And you have to, I don't know, I guess it's like a theory for life. Right. But, um, but this is just like, you just got to move on and go someplace else. If they don't like it, screw it. You don't have to be don't have to burn a bridge or anything um but yeah and then there was a couple times that some people would request uh to see me again and chat with me and there was one kid in particular I do not remember his name and he was really funny and he comes up and he's all dressed up and he just like shakes my hand he's like hello ma'am and I was just like I remember you and he's just like yes I listened to everything that you said last year and I fixed it and I was like why are you here get out of here <laughs> <laughs> no, go get a job right now. You don't need to be here. And then I would just start talking to other students too. Like they would sit down and be like, so here's my resume. And they're really tense and they're really stressed out. And I was like, you seen any good movies lately? They're like, um, huh? And I was like, yeah, like what, have, what movies have you seen? And they're just like, um, and they're just so stressed and tense. And I was like, just tell me like, what, what kind of movies do you like and whatever? And then they're finally loosening up their body language, you know, and they, they start turning the chair. So their chest is more towards me, the, like, you know, open body language, I'm listening. And then after a few minutes, I'm just like, see, this is exactly what I want to see. I need to see you less stressed because if I'm, I, I'm interviewing you because I want to see who you are as a person. I need to know if I can sit in a room with you for 16 hours and, and, you know, be able to do that. So um, I need to kind of get to the core of who you are and I want to see your personality. And so I didn't even look at their resume or anything. And by the end of it, they were just like happy and smiling and, and it was good. But that was a lot of fun <laughs> doing that and torturing them a little bit. <laughs> oh, God, I can only imagine. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that was good. Good times. Cool. Well, Amanda, thanks so much for, for joining us here and for sharing uh, for you. sharing your story. And I just think it's all great advice. And uh, And thanks so much. For sure. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Let's close this out here. Oh, I'm going to push this. I got, oh, there's another dissolve for you, Jeff. <laughs> Mom. Ladies and gentlemen, it's prize time here at Lodge. I made this myself, by the way, uh, using flame. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with it. I've got a little something to give away here. I've got one of these wonderful uh, Logic uh, phone chargers to send away or to give away. Let's see. Yes, you could be one of the cool kids. You could be like Carrie Welton or uh, or is Miriam here? Yes, Miriam Aldejo. Yep. Who won? Or uh, like the very talented Mindy Dubin or uh, Peter Treesize. Or uh, speaking of Quinn, Quinn Richardson, there's his hand holding a, a, a Logic phone charger. So let's go ahead and give one of these away. Hold on. Just going to do this. I have here my very handy dandy web-based random name picker, which is brought to you by HostGator apparently, and the new folding razor phone, um, which I understand is horrible. But anyway, I put everybody's name here in uh, in this, and we're gonna now go ahead and start the random name picker. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, isn't that amazing? Who do we have here? Andrew Malvasio. Oh, let's give it up for Andrew. Congratulations, my friend. You have won yourself a Logic phone charger. Congratulations. All right, congratulations, Andrew. All right, let me go back to the slides here. Next week, 
We have uh, a Mocha Deep Dive with Mary Poplin of Boris Effects. That's next week at 2 p.m. Um, I have a whole bunch of sessions lined up for November. Uh, I'm just trying to secure one of the dates, and then I'll be able to share with you uh, full details next week of what's coming up uh, for November, maybe even a little bit into December here on Logic Live. The forum, the forum, the forum. Funny things are happening on the way to the forum, so please head on over there and, uh, and help to continue to build uh, forum.logic.tv into the place uh, for flame artists that we all know it can be. This episode, like all other episodes of uh, Logic TV, or Logic Live rather, are available at logic.tv. I will have a new episode of the podcast this week for you, the Logic Podcast, which now da, 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 is also available on Spotify. Uh, so please be sure to uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. While you're in the mood, uh, in the mode to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube page. And thanks again to Synesis.io for supporting Logic Live. My friends, that's going to do it for this week. I'll see you next time.